Oh man, why does this keep happening? I just lost my home. Lads, welcome back to Fusion Where IGO. It is your boy Christian the Haver Card Man coming back at you with another spicy deck profile today. This is going to be before Maze of Millennia, so no Bonfire, and also before Phantom Nightmares, so no Promethean Princess, no Populous, none of that stuff. This is just good old original Snake Eye Runic. Let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so starting off with the Snake Eye stuff here, we got Triple Snake Eye Ash, the absolute goat, because he is the legend. On normal or special, just adds you a level 1 fire to your hand. And then the second effect is one that most of the level 1 snake eyes share. And that is being able to send itself on another face-up card to the graveyard to summon a snake eye monster from your deck. Which is just an insane effect. And we're playing two snake eye oak. Is able to reborn a level 1 fire from your graveyard or banished on summon. And then has that tag out effect as well. Uh, I would absolutely play through three of these if I could because in Runix this is still a combo piece thanks to that second effect but it's already a 44 card list. I can't really stretch it up any higher and there's not really anything I feel like I can cut. So... We're also playing one Snake Eye Birch. This can tag itself out with a face-up card during your opponent's turn as a quick effect. Um, and then if you control a fire monster, you can just special summon it from hand. So you can just add it off of Ash and get a free special off of it. Next up, two Snake Eyes Flamberge Dragon. This guy is a hell of a boss monster. Uh, so you can target a face-up monster on the field or in either graveyard and put it in its owner's spell and trap zone as a continuous spell. And then... During your opponent's turn, as a quick effect, you can target a monster, treat it as a continuous spell, and summon it to your field. So if you put your opponent's monster in the spell trap zone, you get to summon it to your field during their turn. It's uh, just an insane card. And then if it's sent from the hand or field to grave, you can special summon back two level one fire monsters from your graveyard. Just an absolutely banger effect. And keep in mind with Flamberge Dragon's Reborn effect that it does not target the two level ones, but it has to summon back two level ones. Just keep that in mind for ruling scenarios. And then last card here for the Snake Eye Engine, we are playing one Fire Recovery. It just allows me to keep going. It gives me some grind game because I can banish it later from the graveyard to recycle three fires back into my deck. You can run out of names pretty quickly. Uh, you could play more than one of this if you really wanted to cut something else to put this in. Um, the only problem, like the only thing is like you draw quite a bit with Runix. So like you're not really too worried about getting to it. It's just kind of like for that late mid to late grind game. Next up, we're playing Triple, one in Seeker of Sinful Spoils. You kind of can't really play Snake Eyes without Sinful Spoils, and I know all the discourse that's been going on about expensive cards right now. I definitely get it. It's tough. Um, but for this deck, you just kind of need the consistency. If Bonfire ever goes down and Populous is fairly cheap, then you could just cut the Wanted Engine entirely and just play Bonfire, Populous, and then the uh, Snake Eyes spell that sends to Graveyard from Field. You absolutely could do that if you can't afford the Wanteds and if Bonfire ever goes down, but I don't think it's going to go down too much, so I'm sorry in advance. Next up, two Dia Bellstar, the Black Witch. This is just for consistency purposes, because once again, we don't have Populous, we don't have Bonfire yet, so playing the extra Dia Bellstar gives us more odds to be able to see our Wanted engine, which gets us into our Snake Eye engine. Same thing goes for the original Sinful Spoil Snake Eye. You open this on a Runic spell, you're just allowed to play, so it doesn't really matter. And then lastly here for the Snake Eye engine, I suppose if the there is a flex spot in the deck it's probably this card but we're playing one sinful spoils of subversion snake eye it's just free removal in the deck that's already searchable off of dia bell star and i figure if i already open the snake eye i might as well have like another target especially for follow-up um and it just pairs so well with flamberge dragon that i couldn't think of a reason not to run it um, but if you guys absolutely want to cut this for a second fire recovery or just to take the deck down to 43, feel free to. I just like it. I, I think it's a good card. Because you can also set it during your opponent's turn so that way you have it for turn three. So, All right, now for the runic engine, we got the three tip. We got three flashing fire, three freezing curses, three destruction. All that should feel pretty standard, to be honest. 
Uh, we got two slumber and then one smiting storm, one dispelling for a total of 16 spells in a 44 card deck. The odds that you draw one of these in your opening hand going first is a 91%. Drawing two is still like a 61%, so it's not that bad. Once again, if you want to adjust stuff around, like if you wanted to cut this, you could fit in like a third slumber for a little extra consistency, or even just taking it down to 43 would also help. So it's totally up to you in that regard. I haven't been having any problem getting consistent hands with Runix, so I don't mind too much. And then of course, to finish it off, we have the two runic fountain here because that's kind of mandatory for the engine it's like what the whole thing wants to get to uh it's really funny being able to use a snake eye monster to send a runic fountain to the graveyard summon a jerry add fountain back and then send a snake eye in the jerry and it just it feels so free um but yeah this engine works really well with this deck uh so let's go ahead and get into the non-engine before we hop into the extra deck i decided to make sure that there was a bit more room in this deck for non-engine for this format because there's a lot of things that you need to be able to deal with stuff in the format there's going to be a lot of labyrinth a lot of fire king there's probably still going to be a decent amount of rescue ace i'm sure snake isle start seeing more play um the big thing is that there's going to be a lot of graveyard stuff like promethean princess we're going to have uh labyrinth doing a lot of graveyard things there's just going to be a lot of shenanigans going on. So I want to be as prepared for some of this stuff as I possibly can be. So we're playing triple Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, generic hand trap. We have triple Ghost Bell. This goes really well into Fire King and Labyrinth. In some cases, Rescue Ace, uh, Snake Eye, of course, if you hit the Flamberg Dragon or the Princess. Like you can, if your opponent gets a Princess in Graveyard, once that card comes out, obviously, um, if they try to use it as disruption on your turn, you could just bell it and stop it from resolving. And then lastly here, three draw Lockbird. Basically the only deck I can think of off the top of my head that this really doesn't hit is going to be Labyrinth. And even that it can do a little bit of stuff to Labyrinth, uh, just not a whole lot. I wanted to make sure that I had the most immediate and impactful hand traps in my deck present. So that way I'm ready to deal with other decks. Um, and that way I also have room to side out when I go into games two and three, of course, like I said, I am on a 44 card deck, so I absolutely could just cut the three troll, cut the three bell and just have Ash as a good generic hand trap and then be able to put in a couple more cards to raise the gas ceiling of my deck. But what that does is like that gives me three cards that I will like barely ever have the chance to see um and then aren't really going to impact a whole lot the nice thing about playing nine is that you're going to be more likely to see them especially once you draw off of your runic spells so they're actually still pretty good going first to help you deal with your opponent because the unfortunate thing with snake eyes is that they don't really disrupt a whole lot you're getting all of your disruption through the runic engine you're getting a lot of your follow-up through the snake eye engine and of course the synergy between just being able to go runic spell summon something so that way i can tag it out with my uh snake eye guys after getting value off of them is just incredible they the snake eyes clear your emz very quickly so but yeah I, I wanted to make sure i had at least some hand traps to be able to be prepared for a lot of the decks that i might come across once again like fire king like rescue ace like pure snake eye like labyrinth so that is it for the main deck let's go ahead and get into the extra real quick so for the extra deck of course we got a bunch of level ones we are playing the like link one package link karibo and relinquished anima they're just mainstays uh for link twos we have an ip sp pretty good combo if you don't have the money for sp i do have a recommendation play topologic bomber dragon it's actually surprisingly good in this deck you have a lot of ways to be able to dodge around his effect and be able to trigger it on your own to just blow up your opponent's field during their turn and he's also a surprising crackback otk tool if you get a setup where you haven't activated any runic spells and your opponent just can't do stuff but this kind of does allow you to turn your snake eyes into disruptions funnily enough um, so consider playing that i just could not make the room for it i tried my absolute best next up we have a dark the dark charmer gloomy and a heat of the fire charmer ablaze just fantastic cards um not really much to say one sunlight wolf to help us in the grind game of course being able to get that flamberge dragon back to hand is very important uh we're playing one nightmare unicorn to help crack the board this is an extra option with ip but it's going to be more likely you're going to go into sp and then you can go to unicorn on the follow-up uh we also have one apollosa bow to the goddess and then one underworld goddess to finish off our link monsters here you'll see it's very link heavy a lot of people doing snake eye runic are doing synchro stuff with jet synchron um 
I like to just get my runic engine established and then I basically don't really need to care about my EMZ after that. So like once I have my fountains established and I've gotten all of my resources good to go, I'm just using my runic stuff as disruption at that point or protection so that I can go off and link climb because there's a lot of just insane things you can do with link monsters. So that's what I'm going for. Of course, we are also playing the one superstar slayer Typhon sky crisis. So if I do need to clear the EMZ later on in the game, I definitely can. And then I just have to wait a turn to be able to summon, but that's fine. So that's it for those. Just got four left in the extra. And that is the runix. Got two Hugh and the runic wings to get our fountain. We got one Munin. Um, so like these are pretty standard ratios. You basically only play the Munin for time, double Hugin to get your fountain, and then the one Jerry to get your fountain back from graveyard. So like this is why I just like getting my engine established and then not really worrying about it after that because after I get all my stuff online, my I, I'm basically going to be out of these. The only one I might have left is a Munin and maybe a single Hugin but you go through at least one of these on turn one if you open up right that is it for the extra let's cover the side deck super fast so side deck is nothing special it's still a work in progress i'm still trying to figure out what all i like um but there's some cards that are in here specifically for the snake eye stuff so starting off we have triple effect veiler here just an extra hand trap to be able to draw into and it's better than imperm in this deck because if you're drawing off of runic spells you can draw into this and still play it you don't have to worry about it being a dead card in your hand until you can set it next up is triple ghost ogre and snow rabbit this is uh i don't think it's on a lot of people's radars right now but i think this is actually getting a little bit better this format um considering all of the continuous stuff in fire kings and also considering stuff like horus because there's going to be quite a bit more orcus running around most likely and there's horus phantom knights there's a bunch of horus builds um this can just snipe the king sark and that basically shuts down their turn unless they have another one so uh feels good Next up here, we're running Triple, Fantastical Dragon, Phantasme, a lot of link summoning the format, a lot of SPs, just gets you free draws, also puts a body on board that gives you targeted effect protection, so you can uh, make sure that your Snake Eye monsters resolve on their summon effect, and then be able to tag it and the Snake Eye out for free value. It's just, it's free, that's all there is to it. Uh, next up, we're playing one curry card, different incarnate, extra level one fire that we can search for going second. If our opponent puts up a board of disruption, we at least know that we can deal with it uh, if we're able to get to curry Kara. Next up, two Tino Wrestler Pankratops. Uh, just great at dealing with the game. I do like this over Fenrir in some cases because with Pank, you can just summon it without activating an effect, go battle a swing over an IP and then tribute it, or uh, swing over an SP rather, and then tribute it to pop another card. Or if they try to activate an IP to go into an SP, you can just chain pank in response and pop the SP. And it's good. Uh, it, it's just, it's a good card. Data rest of pank tops is good. Of course, if I don't need to use his effect, He's just an extra body to work with on field. They're a 2600 beater. And the reason that he is better than Fenrir is that if I'm going second, there are still some times I want to try to do a ru runic card in the standby or in the draw phase to play around stuff like Droll. Um, so if I summon out a monster before I even get to my main one, then Fenrir is just dead, which is why I don't play Fenrir. Uh, next up, we have Triple Nibiru, the Primal Being to round off the side deck. This is, once again, the same thing. It's a turn ender for my opponent, uh, given that there's several decks that do play into this. And it also gives me another body on field to be able to use with my Snake Eye stuff just freely. So that is it for the deck profile today, guys. Let me know what you think of this down in the comments below. Give me any suggestions you got if you've been tinkering around with Snake Eye Runic already. Like I said, I know a lot of people are trying out the Synchro variant. And I do like synchro summoning, don't get me wrong, I really do enjoy it. I am just not big brained enough for that, so I'm sticking with my link summoning because I don't want to do math like that. But anyways guys, that's all I got for you today. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you all next time. Good fun. Have luck. <laughs>